Hello and welcome back to Brain Says Strange Things. I'm Patrick, this is my brother Jordan. We like horror movies and we get together every now and then to talk to you about them. Uh, in this episode we are going to be reviewing a brand new horror film that's in the theaters right now, uh, just debuted uh, this past weekend. Actually it might no longer be in Depending on when you view this. As no, I mean, this one probably is not going to be there for... Yeah, well, it did It did well. Okay. Um, and that is uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D. So this is the direct sequel to the original 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre, directed by Toby Hooper. And it is the newest attempt to reboot that franchise, uh, which now has, I think, seven films... Uh, or so to really? its name. Yeah. So there's a there's a good number of uh, Texas Chainsaw movies out there. This is the newest effort, and this is the latest attempt to kind of restart the franchise and, and kick off the next generation of terror. Uh, so, Jordan, what did you think of Texas Chainsaw 3D? I was less than impressed. Mm -hmm. It was pretty terrible. Pretty bad. Um... Yeah, I kind of said that this is kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. I'm getting so tired of these movies. And I don't really get like a sick enjoyment out of going to see a bad movie or anything like that. I'm not like rooting for them to be bad, but this is just annoying. Yeah, well there's, there's the type of bad movies that are still entertaining, and then mm -hmm. there are the type of bad it's films. It's so bad it's good. Yep, and then there are films that are just bad. And uh, this one, unfortunately, I agree. I think it was just not very good. Um, I went in with fairly low expectations. Higher than mine, though, apparently. Yeah, I mean, I had low expectations, but I was I wanted to be entertained. I, I went in open-minded. I was like, all right, you know, there's nothing really that I've seen or heard about this movie that makes it look particularly good or interesting. Um, and I've not, you know, heard any comments by the producers or filmmakers that really make me think they know what they're doing. But I, I just want to be entertained. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece um, like I think the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre is. Yeah, I, I went into it fresh, too. I, yeah. I watched the trailer a few months ago. Yeah. Probably, like, the earliest version of the trailer just because of the name, mm -hmm. which is why they... This is, that's how they get you in the theater, because right. of the name of it. That's how all these remakes do it. Uh, but I just had steered clear completely. Um, today, I did the minimal amount of research I could do. As we often do for this show. Um, I've just, I looked at the name of the director. He had done a few other things. Um, nothing really stood out. Actors, all kind of unknown, which is okay. But it just had nothing going for it. It didn't, it didn't sell me at all. Mm -hmm. Even in trying to figure out what this thing is about. Mm -hmm. uh, I found out it was a direct sequel uh, from you, because you mentioned it. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. I don't even think they use that in the trailers, do they? No, I... Um, okay, so he, so here's where I'm at going into this movie. Um, we oh, both... What? The, well, this is kind of where my head was at like going into this oh, movie. Oh, okay. I thought you said why well, you're mad going into this movie. No, no, no. I, so wasn't, I, was, I was mad after it, but not before yes. I went in. Yes. But, um, so... We're both fans of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's a masterpiece of the genre. They show clips of that movie. That is that movie is the best trailer for the original. Well, it's not the best trailer, but the best thing you can get out of it is you get to actually watch scenes from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre on yeah. a big screen. So it's blurry because it's in 3D, of course. But yeah, so I really love the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, although I've only seen two Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. I've seen the original, and then I've seen Toby Hooper's sequel, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, and I haven't seen any of the others. I haven't seen see, the I've newer seen, I've seen one just with just one Peel. more than that. I've seen those two. Yeah. And then I saw the beginning. Yeah. So I didn't know if this new movie was... I, I s sort of assumed that it was a, a sequel to the reboot that was done a couple of years ago with Jessica Biel. Because um, they've, they've already rebooted the Texas Chainsaw franchise. So, re um, so I assume... Yeah, exactly. It's like a More second reboot. But I, I, I didn't know if it was that or if it was a, a follow-up to the one with Jessica Biel, which I haven't seen. But I read an article in Entertainment Weekly 
where they explained that this movie was essentially a second attempt at a reboot that would take the approach of ignoring everything that happened after that original film. Second attempt? And sort Strike of, two. Yeah, and sort of picking up right where the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 1974 left off and ignoring all the sequels and previous reboots. So that aspect of it I kind of was intrigued by okay, because yeah. I recently rewatched the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original, mm -hmm. in anticipation of seeing this movie. So I was like, oh, that's perfect. Like, I just watched the original and this one's going to pick up right after the end of that one. Ignore all the other stuff that I haven't seen anyway. Um, so that I was excited about. <laughs> like, this movie is great. Now I want to ignore everything about it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, but, but I know I know what you mean. But I wasn't... It's um, nice to think that they're kind of using an idea that's solid already. And then they're kind of launching off and doing it their own thing. It seemed respectful. Inst instead of rebooting it, it seemed where you're taking all yeah, the elements. It's, yeah, it seemed respectful of the original. Like, the original is a classic. The original that's what happened. That's I liked about the beginning of Forget the franchise. This is how we would create a franchise. So I was like, all right. I was less hopeful by the fact that the producer is the guy that was in charge of the Saw movies, which I think are... You should not have told me that. Not before. good. Um... So that's kind of what I knew going into it. But I didn't really know anything about the story or anything like that. Um, and the story is essentially... It literally picks up... I mean, you see clips from the first movie um, that have some new actors kind of inserted in there. Um, and it's all 3D'd up because it's a 3D movie. Um, but they, they... Which isn't... It's not distracting. No, they kind of bring... Yet, so far. They kind of bring you up to speed... Uh, with a little summary of the first film through really quick clips, and then it picks up immediately after. It's funny because right before we went to see this movie, we were talking about movies that do that. Yeah, where they use scenes from yep. the previous. Yeah, movie. we said it's sequel. not it's not done as much anymore. Yeah, and then all of a sudden they there did it is. in this one. Um, and uh, so it picks up immediately after that, and I'm assuming we don't have to summarize the Texas Chainsaw Massacre for people, um, but the it picks up summarizes with it. the police coming to the house of the family to arrest Leatherface, essentially, because the one girl has escaped. And then a mob, this essentially a mob shows up of, you know, like, hick townspeople. They burn down the house. They kill, supposedly, all of the members of the family, supposedly including Leatherface. So, then we flash forward years later. Um, we know that a, a baby... Um, who was part of that family, who was not in the original film, but... Survived, like... Survived. Like a, in a Clark Kent way where they adopt her. Yep, she's adopted by another family. She finds out that she's inherited this house from her grandfather. She finds out she's part of this family. Uh, she goes back to the house, and she finds out she's inherited more than just a house. She's also inherited her cousin, Leatherface, who has survived the massacre and still lives in the house. And that's Calm what... Calm down. Well, it's just... It's thrilling. Oh. It's a thrilling premise. Yes. Um, so that's what, uh, that's essentially the story of the movie. Um, this girl inherits this house, finds out she's related to this family, but she finds out she, she's also related to Leatherface, who's still alive, mm -hmm. and very quickly starts chasing around, um, all the attractive young people in this movie and mm -hmm. butchering them. And, um, there are further twists towards the end of the film <laughs> that, um, just took it into, like, really stupid territory but all right let's get into it what what didn't you like about this movie like what didn't work like it started out you've got clips from the original which you appreciated mm -hmm. and then it kind of went downhill from there i can tell you like like little details about what didn't work mm -hmm. there's so many in this movie I don't it's wanna, not I don't a very like, well-made film so i don't want to kick it while it's down so we could really pick it apart but here's the big overall problem with the story anyway is and this is why I like the beginning and this is why by the end I absolutely hated it. So it starts out like you mentioned before. Um, it's basically the scene from um, a Rob Zombie's movie, Devil's Rejects, um, right? Where they're doing a big raid on the house, the family um, that were inspired by the Texas Chainsaw Massacre family actually for Rob Zombie to do. Um, so it starts out that way. And then, because what you always kind of think in the back of your head at the end of these horror movies is like, well, what happened afterwards? Yeah. Like, ob is... Obviously, they're going to track, the cops are dumb, but they're going to be able to track yeah. everything back to this one location, arrest the whole family, and then that's the end. Yeah, you know, like, this is, this shows They just what don't happened. show it because it's it's not 
an interesting part of the story, but you still kind of wonder. Right, and this shows you what happened immediately after. And this introduces it, sounds kind of odd, but it introduces it into like the real world. It's like, this is what happens when real elements kick in after a horror mm-hmm. movie. Like, the killer doesn't always get away. The killer almost never gets away in real life. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're able to track everything back to this house really easily. It's like the same day. Yep. It um, picks up literally moments after. Mm-hmm. Um, but then by the end of the movie, this girl becomes just like a superhero almost. And they're, and they're, every townsfolk, every member of the town kills somebody else. There's like a million different murders going on. Mm-hmm. And like it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. It becomes a completely different movie than what it's set out to be. Yeah, or what you thought it might be based on They that had to have known scene. at some point, though, mm-hmm. that that's kind of where it started out, I guess. I don't know. It, it just started out with one idea in mind, and then it ended not, not even following through with it, mm-hmm. I guess. You know, it, just, it was a completely different movie than when it started out, which starts out, and I'm kind of into it, but... Yeah. By the end, I was so frustrated. I could not stop like moving in my seat. I was just uncomfortable. And yeah, it's it's only a 90-minute movie. And it's the most unnecessary use of 3D ever. Yeah, I did it, not like the use of no 3D. Point. It was I've, very gimmicky. Other than to make me look like an idiot sitting there with these plastic yeah, glasses. It, I didn't it like, adds nothing. I didn't like the 3D either. I thought it actually was gimmicky and sort of distracting and silly and it, it was not immersive I have never felt so removed from a film like emotionally and just on every level it wasn't scary I didn't think the kills weren't interesting the gore was not particularly shocking um, I mean I kind of went through phases with this movie I, I it became apparent really early on that this was going to be a stupid movie and by stupid movie, I mean typical, you know, modern Hollywood horror movie. You're like, um, this is just another remake of the Yeah, remake. I'm like, oh, okay, the actors are, like, stupidly attractive. You know what I mean? Like, Yes, it's ridiculous. Yeah, like, it, it's, it's silly. It takes it almost to, like, a, a, a level of reality that you can't really connect to. The, and the characters the, the funny are part, annoying. The, the funny thing I notice is the best scene, I think, or, okay, one of the best, but one that I always think about, and I think Sam Raimi even uses it in Evil Dead, where there's, like, a sweeping, like, I don't know how you would say it, like, an upskirt shot almost, where it's at the people's, like, kneecap, mm-hmm. kneecaps almost, and it's kind of slightly looking up, like you're looking at someone's butt. Yes. Famous <laughs> uh, shot in the Texas As Cancer she's Master. walking towards, and as it goes, it swoops under the... There's like a, a swing and it swoops under it. Uh-huh. That just summarizes everything that's great about that movie, about how it looks. The original about, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yes, I'm talking about the original. Um, like just the look of it, you get everything from that one shot. Yeah, it's that iconic. looks great. It's an iconic. It's like uh, a little girl wandering into like Hansel and Gretel yeah. going into the witch's And it's castle. got a kind of grimy, kind and then, of sultry, kind of sexy. Yeah, because it's shot on uh, like 15 millimeters. Looks film. great. Um, and it's like blown up so it's all grainy and it which just adds to it. Yeah. That wouldn't work Looks in like a snuff film almost. Yeah, that that wouldn't work in almost any other film, but mm-hmm. that works perfectly for this. But in the new one Yes. In the new one, they do a ton of those shots. They it's like, do. It's like they knew and, it. Well they do it. I think it was a conscious homage to the original. And but there they, are a lot they, of they homages it, to the original. They use it in such the wrong way. It's yeah. used just to show someone's ass or something. Or to show that, hey, we've seen the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We get it. But you can do that We're real once, fans. You know. But they didn't really get what made that movie work. So, exactly. It became really clear early on that this movie, just from an aesthetic standpoint, was what you would assume the Hollywood remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is. Glossy, better looking people. Um, just kind of caricatures rather than characters so right away it was clear to me that okay we're at that's the level we're at right it's gonna be a stupid movie but i was still willing to go along with it i was like okay stupid can still be fun like uh the my bloody valentine remake from a few years ago which was also in 3D. better better not a great movie but it had that kind of stupid fun quality to it so i'm like okay i i'm willing to go along with that on this it's not going to be the texas chainsaw massacre but it might still be a fun gory movie then it got boring 
Um, it became... And then the credits rolled. <laughs> and then... It, it became clear that there were not going to be any sequences filled with any kind of tension or horror. Leatherface... I didn't like Leatherface in this movie. He didn't have any kind of, like, personality um, in the way that he did even in the first movie. Um, he was just kind of a non-presence. The gore was not Chainsaws interesting. Chainsaws don't make you bulletproof. Yeah, the 3D was not interesting. Um, so I was I was bored. The I, 3D was the worst part of it, actually. If I think, actually, if they eliminated some of that stuff, um, it would have been a little better. Maybe not. Yeah, but I don't know. Every time they throw something at the camera, it's an obvious like computer generated chainsaw, or it just. I kind of liked when he totally threw, calls it out. I kind of liked when he threw the chainsaw at the cop. But I think I more just like the idea of Leatherface throwing his chainsaw at the cop than I really needed that to be in three D. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, but yeah, there there were the you know I, even but when even when it was boring, I was like, well, something interesting might happen. You know, like, um, there was that sequence where he chases her to the fairgrounds. That was going to be my example of the only scene I liked. Okay, well, let's talk about that, because they kind of set up this this fair sequence a little bit in kind of background dialogue, mm -hmm. and then you get to this point where Leatherface is chasing the heroine to the this heavily populated fairgrounds. I guess I should say I like the idea of it. Because yep. like, like the introduction, like I was saying, this is, it, this is what happens when you're you introduce something like that into the real world. Because Leatherface could chase after this girl in the woods where no one's around for hours and hours and, and hours. Yeah. And we've seen it before, and there's not much you can do with it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but they, what they happens when they happens? stumble across a populated They come into a huge area. crowd that's populated. Yeah, that was kind of the part where I kind of set up. I was like, okay, this is something new. This is a new idea. And then they just don't do anything with it. It fell flat. Nothing came of it. Nothing they was followed They cut the idea up. out from themselves because it's, uh, it's supposed to be around Halloween, I guess it is. They say, like, Happy Halloween. They, oh, never, they don't make that's that really right. clear. Yeah. And then they don't make it clear, and that's the problem, is she goes in there, and you realize, okay, why is no one really noticing that this guy is chasing after someone with a chainsaw? Yeah, And then, and then you're kind of thinking, like, oh, yeah, they did mention it was Halloween, so I guess someone could be wandering right. around in a costume... Um, chasing after somebody, but you're so slow in realizing this little fact. And by the time matter. you figure that out, the scene's practically over, and nothing really comes of it. They and don't do any gag. They do a little gag where a kid has like a chainsaw toy, a and then he scares and away. Scared by the real other like, There's face. so many more. If go that way, completely make it almost a comedy. If you want to do that way, yeah. They just so so that's it. So when that scene fell flat, that's when I realized. There's no hope that they're going to make That's this when I just kind of like threw up my hands. And I yeah. was like, okay. But then even after that, so we went from like stupid to boring to like really stupid. Because at the end it got really stupid in my opinion. And I mean, I was I don't literally. Know. I, 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 I think so. Say that, at the, but, I do. At the end, I was, and I'm, I'm it usually kind of maintained I'm, a nice I level feel of like, stupidity. I feel like I'm a gener fairly generous critic. I have fairly low expectations for these kind of movies, but like, at the end, I was saying to myself, "You've got to be fucking kidding me!" With some of the things that I was saying that with a lot of the stuff that too. The, at the end of this movie, the sheriff's kid. That's who turns out to be. Okay, there's a another hunky guy in the. Like all these models are in this yeah. town, except yeah, for the parents, crazy. of course. I like when they hit the hitchhiker at the beginning. It's like, oh, we hit a hot guy. We hit like an Abercrombie and Fitch Ridiculous. model. And then as soon as that character is killed off, we're gonna spoil this movie, by the way, from here on out, probably. Yeah. Um, when that character, I don't know if you can off, really call it spoiler. As but... soon as that hot character is killed off, they introduce like another hot guy, <laughs> like the very next Whatever. scene. I was just like, this is like ridiculous. And, yeah, I'm thinking of other stupid things, too. Like, that subplot with, like, the two guys having an affair. Like, the the girl and, like, the, the guy who are oh, having an affair. That happened so long ago. Yeah, you know, that went it nowhere. There was no point in doing that. There's not that. even a, a moment where the main girl, her boyfriend's cheating on her with the slutty girl. Yeah, and that goes nowhere. The, the two characters are just killed she, off. She doesn't even find out that they're cheating. No. They were just cheating. It's just never, it was just an excuse to get that girl in her underwear and for the guy to take his shirt off. Which, I mean... That's fine, but yeah, it was just not good. And I mean, for me, when the movie got really bad, though, was towards the end when they started to deal with this subplot of this cover up that the town had done. And the fact that this mob had killed Leatherface's family and they're really responsible for what's going on. Which is, and the then, story became a complete ripoff of Nightmare on Elm Street. 
in a way, well, but I mean... Fr- they chase Freddy yeah. down, they kill him, he comes back. Right, but Nightmare on Elm Street did something better with that. This oh, I'm not one, saying it's this on would, that level at this all. This would be like making the parents into the villains in the movie and making Freddy into the hero. That's another problem that I had with it, is you're so morally confused. Yes! This how movie, you're supposed to feel. I thought that too. Where is the moral center of this movie? And I know I had no idea that if I should might, be rooting for the girl. No, yeah. Or Leatherface... I mean, at the end, they basically turn the townspeople, the ones who were responsible for this kind of mob justice that was brought against Leatherface's horrific family. I mean, let's not forget, these people are like murdering psychopathic cannibals. Um, It turns the people responsible for that mob justice into the real villains of this movie. And they go after the heroine. They try to kill her in this horrible way. And Leatherface ends up saving her, essentially becoming a kind of anti-hero at the end of this movie. They try and to make him into a sympathetic up, character. Yes, and Leatherface is not a sympathetic character. The reason he's not is because... He's, okay, if he's he, if fucking he, Leatherface. Well, yeah, <laughs> like, he's, you carrying, explain why he's Leatherface. wearing someone else's face. He's exactly. carrying Exactly. But... If the story was he's exacting his revenge on the whatever, like even relatives of the people that kill him, okay, that's misguided and that's not the right yeah. thing to do. But at least that's you kind of get a hint of that because he had like pictures that he yeah was, he he was, he crossed, was he sort of supposedly had a plan. killing off the people who were responsible for killing sort of, his but family. Then if, but then if you look at the earlier movie, he kills anything that wanted the to. The reason they killed his family is because he fucking like ate people and wore their skin and and. <laughs> So if he if he saves the girl at the end and he he kills the sheriff who is a jackass, which okay, you're glad he did that. If he does just those two things, does that make up for his killing spree? That's why I was just confused. Yeah. And then the girl Like are we supposed to forget the girl that felt this is bad because they end up being related, of course. Um then the girl is sympathetic with him and I'm just like I kind of felt like I'm outside watching that. I'm like, yeah. you guys feel whatever you want to feel. I have no idea what I'm yeah. feeling here. And, and I mean, I really I did. I kind of like I, staring we're, at the exit We're science. really ragging on it, but I kept wanting to look at it. I was like, well, maybe they're just going to be really twisted with it and just make it clear that this girl is sick and fucked up in the head so that she thinks this cannibal cousin of hers That's where is I a good guy. Go. <laughs> but it didn't quite go there either. It, it, it almost was like the film. That would have turned into like the sequel. Yeah, but it, it would have like meshed. The it didn't quite go there because the cop let Leatherface go too, which is crazy, just crazy. At the end of the movie, this this cop essentially lets Leatherface kill this guy, and then basically lets him and the girl walk away at the end of the movie. That's ridiculous. There's that moment when the girl also. I'm getting really upset <laughs> about this. There's that the scene <laughs> where the girl makes that turn, like the visible turn. Uh-huh. She's like she's walking out of the slaughterhouse at the end, or towards the end. She's like. She makes the decision to go back and save Leatherface, basically. Uh-huh. And the thing, the only thing I can think of at that up moment, the chainsaw. she takes the chainsaw, which it's been done before. They did yeah. that in the second one. And the, I feel like even psycho. in describing it, we're making it sound cooler than it actually was, because I don't think any of this really worked in the movie. But the only thing I could think of when I saw when that scene happened, you can imagine that in another kind of like a Kill Bill moment or something where it just goes off the rails and it gets all crazy. Yeah. Which the original sequel does. goes like nuts. Yes, that's a whole, the whole sequel to Texas Chainsaw. The but original sequel. The even at that point, topic. that moment just didn't fit. I would, The thing I kept thinking was like, nope, you haven't earned it. You guys yep. did not earn this. That's a really good way of putting that's it. That's a false... Yep. Like, I just got scammed. Yep, you're right. You're that's right. Exactly that what I was character thinking. would not have made that decision yep. under these circumstances, and you can and say that about fit, it doesn't fit in the mood of the, the movie. movie. It doesn't fit with her yep. character because yeah. Really not character. only is it inconsistent, it doesn't fit in the story because yeah. it's morally confused. Yeah, it's not just, only is it inconsistent and unworthy of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but it's inconsistent with itself within the own. Basically, own what movie. I'm saying is that it's a cool moment, but that just points out how horrible everything else is. Yeah. You could maybe there, there weren't even enough of those cool little moments to make it so bad it's good. Yeah, it, I, it I, I wish I could say this was a lousy movie, but there was that one sequence that was right. really terrific. I really can't. Um, I can point to some that were particularly bad. I would have almost said like the carnival scene, but then they don't do anything. Nope, like they don't. I was about to be like... Oh, all right. This is that's what I thought it was going to be. I was like, this is the one good idea. This is at least the moment where I can point to um, 
where this movie is going to like stick in my memory. At least. Right. This they um, built I'm, the movie around this one idea, but no, there was no, there was nothing there. Yeah, they they had a concept that I had to think that went through their heads. Yeah. I, I'm, there's sequences in the movie that stand out as being particularly bad. Like I, the, I think the nadir of the film was when she was in the police station, leafing through all the documents about what had happened to Leatherface's family, yes. and that scene just took for fucking ever. And the funny thing because is, because we knew all that information <laughs> already. I was gonna say they were summarizing what we saw a half hour ago. I, that's what I was gonna say. We were going to be talk. We almost oh, talked about this fuck. earlier before we filmed this, but that was what I was going to say. I swear to God, yeah. is that they took. They take I a swear scene, to God, that scene lasted a half. They hour. take a scene where she's reading what had happened, right? What you watched in the opening scene, right? Like we've all and seen. It's supposed to be amazing because, right? Well, we've seen. She's these, discovering it, but right. you don't care. Yeah, we. Yeah, they. I. I actually, when I was watching the movie, I was thinking like, here's how they should have filmed this. They should have filmed it with her finding the file, and then we never see her looking through the file, and the cops come into the room and see, like, she's gone and she's read it. Because we already know what that file says. You know what I mean? You don't need to spend 20 minutes with her reading over information and, and having flashbacks to earlier words, like, from the massacred movie. and killed, and it's like, we know and all that. And then that was intercut with one of the worst, other worst sequences of the movie, which is which where is the what? cop oh. was investigating the trail of blood in <laughs> Leatherface's house and filming it with his cell phone so that, ugh, oh, I right. don't even... Well, here's another problem with that. Okay, that's, okay. that's kind of an extended scene that is worth talking about, I think. Um... They follow the trail. This is where it gets close to that moment again where it's like... You this keep is thinking where, it's going to be good. Well, also <laughs> where, like, this is where real life... I should have known by this point yeah. really, that this that this idea that I've concocted in my head is just not going to come true. Mm -hmm. But the cop finally goes down into the basement of this big house where Leatherface keeps all his victims. Yeah, the and girl has escaped. He's gone to the police. The He's gone to the police. investigating. He doesn't wait for backup for whatever reason. It's a small town. Okay, I'll justify it, some of this stuff. But so he's following this trail of blood that came from like a car accident miles away. This person was filled with blood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know Can what you you're saying. It, was, it this, wasn't a trail no, of blood. There's this it was a thick trail of blood like that someone, goes for miles. It's like someone had a gallon of blood and they had a mop. <laughs> oh, more than a gallon. And they, well, more than that. They took a mop and they just like dragged it behind them. It's this huge path yeah. that leads all the way <laughs> down into the basement. And, and you kept saying, like, it goes around a corner, and there's a door, and there's another door. It's like you kept following this trail of blood, and it's like, oh, man, we cannot clear, convey this. It was, like the, it was like a red carpet yeah, that was laid out. It was really bad. And supposedly, that was from one victim? Yeah, the, the girl. The girl who he dragged out. Who, who was, was still alive! alive. <laughs> what are you found there? You ever, ever, ever lost she all that was blood? still alive. Oh, Jesus God. You know what? There was... I feel like we're being a little too hard. There was one good thing about this movie. That burger that I had at Applebee's after we saw it, that was that was a good burger. I don't know about you, but the one I had was really good. So the evening was not a. There was kind of a little wash. hint of like nudity towards the end where he notices the little scar, you know. Yeah, there wasn't even any actual nudity, was there? No. They kept Which is another almost. <laughs> there was like a lot of side boob and half boob. And it was like there. It was. Yeah, there's no. Where he notices she's got a little birthmark. I didn't even follow that. Like, why did she have a birthmark or a thing? I don't know, it was because of the stupid pendant of she the family. Burn. and the, So the family kind of branded everybody? No, I think she got that from the fire. Okay, so she had a little, like, that little locket or yeah. whatever. Okay. There are, I definitely should have taken notes because there are so many things. Yeah, we, I mean, like, we could really eviscerate this movie. But the point is, it was ill-conceived, there was no moral center to this movie, and it was boring. And it wasn't scary. And, like, seriously, like, fuck this guy, this producer, because I was reading this Entertainment Weekly article, he's like, he goes to the rights holders of Texas Chainsaw, he's like, dudes, I did Saw, he probably didn't he say probably, No, he probably said dude. He probably did say dude. He said dude. He he's like, said dude. here's what I did with Saw, here's how much money. He came in in, like, uh, like t-shirt and yeah. jeans in there and Backwards suits, and he's cap. Like, it's like, I don't even know this guy's name. Attitude, attitude. Yeah. Give him sunglasses. We'll make him proactive. Um... <laughs> But, yeah, he came in and he's like, you know, this is what I did with Saw. You guys are sitting on this amazing franchise that's been mishandled. And all I could think was, 
my God, how bad was the Jessica Biel remake? What a huckster. If, if this was like the big idea, this was like what's going to kick off the new franchise, this is what he came to them with? It's like, it's fucking bullshit. There's like nothing here. You know, as, bad, <laughs> as, as I feel like it ran a marathon, but as bad as it is, I think, honestly, the remake, the, the new beginning, I okay. think that's a worse film. Yeah, that's the one I that kind of, I guess kind of killed the last reboot. This one made me think not about the movie or the character. It made me think about like filmmaking and stuff. Mm-hmm. So the other one is just totally flat. There's it's nothing one dimensional. Uh, not that this is three dimensional. I mean, it, it's three D, but it's not. It's technically three. There are no D's. Um, well, there are some D's in the movie, but it was like I don't know. It was just. There's nothing to say about that one, whereas this one you can kind of realize what a wasted opportunity that. that yeah, it was a wasted that. opportunity because I mean, it's like a social experiment. Always. Yeah, because like I've always, you know, I love the fran. I do love the certain horror franchises. I love the series. Like when I was a kid, I always used to love to watch a whole series. Like we rent all the Friday the Thirteenth, so we rent all the Nightmare Watched all the puppets. Frankly, I was too afraid to watch all the Texas Chainsaws, so that's not one that I actually did watch. But like all the. Um, Pinheads. What do you call the Pinhead movies? Hellraiser. Hellraiser movies. Um, all the uh, Child's Play movies, you know. So I like the idea of, like, I, I kind of hope they do make a successful franchise out of Texas Chainsaw. So I was kind of excited for that going in, but it's just, I'm like, maybe it will be hugely successful. There might be six more of these, but, I mean, I have no use for them. If that's well, I mean, it's, it's already, like, financially successful, but that... Doesn't really. Yeah. Happen. Well, it had it as, as of this recording, it's had a good opening weekend, but I I suspect that might drop off pretty quick. Um, well, after people see this, of course. Well, there you go. Once we post this, this will kill it. So sorry, it's a lot of responsibility that we have. With mm. great power comes great responsibility. Mm. So, okay, so we did not like Texas Chainsaw 3D at all, but. There are some oh, segue. Reimag segue. There are some reimaginings, reboots that, that are not retarded. Yeah, you shouldn't use retarded as a pejorative. We'll edit that out. Um, but <laughs> but there are some good remakes. And and if you're a horror fan, if you're like a modern horror fan, you can't avoid remakes. You can hate all of them. Um, but you've got to deal with them on some level. Mm -hmm. um, so we thought uh, we would maybe kind of briefly discuss some of the best and worst remakes of horror movies because this is essentially a remake reboot, even though it's technically, you know, technically a sequel. Mm -hmm. So, what are some of your favorites? What are some of the best uh, of remakes of, of classic horror films that you really enjoy? Uh, well, I feel like we've kind of talked about some of them already. We've definitely talked about Rob Zombie's Halloween in mm -hmm. this and previous episodes. We I both that enjoy it. It's, I mean, it's not a perfect film by any means, but it, maybe that's why I like it because it's it was surprising. Mm -hmm. It just came out of nowhere. Um, and then also we talked about the thing, which is another really oh good right remake. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I'm just gonna lump all the remakes and reboots into one category, whether than or rather than try to figure out the difference between them you know some just take this complete story right do a yeah. literal yeah some some are sequels some are some just take remakes. characters yeah whatever um so if you lump all those together um another one i was trying to think earlier today um what ones i would put i was trying to compile like a best and worst in mm -hmm. my head and i was kind of surprised how many like good ones i mm -hmm. came up with and i think i don't know if that's I don't know, it's just kind of interesting, because maybe it's just because the bad ones that are bad don't stick with you, and you just don't forget about them. Like, someone could probably remind me of, like, a million ones that I've seen that are bad, that didn't work, but immediately I just kind of leap to a lot of ones that did work. Um, recently I saw the Night of the Living Dead, uh, remade in 1990, uh, yes. um, where they sort of take the original idea they kind of they do the same story but then they go in another direction sort of like halfway through um, and they change it it's one of the early movies where they take the final girl and kind of turn her into the hero 
which is I that, I thought that was the most interesting part of the movie. Um, she's wearing a dress at the beginning, and through like a series of events, she's like losing articles of clothing just because they're getting torn off by zombies. She has to take some off to form it in a tourniquet or whatever. She loses her shoes because she's running. And then she's adopting things along the way. She picks up a, a fire poker that becomes like her iconic weapon. She doesn't have shoes, so she takes these big army boots off of a guy that's dead already. So she's like in a little cut up dress wearing army boots with a fire poker. And it's just like a really iconic image that didn't exist anywhere in the original. The original one's a great movie. But this is just a good example of taking that idea and bringing it into a new era. Yeah, the original sort of um, took unexpectedly the African American character um, and and sort made of, him yeah. into the kind of hero of that movie. Yeah, um, and this one um, transforms the all the guys are like end up being helpless because for one reason or another, the, um, either they can't come to a consensus on what to do. Or because they're just like, they're wusses. They're mm. they've been feminized basically. Mm. They don't want to do anything because they're scared. The guys are either jerks or they're scared, or they just have a foolhardy idea. And that's another good part about the story is that you don't quite know what the best solution is. Um, one person has one idea, and one person has another idea, and you're kind of like, you know, both of those could work. Unlike a lot of zombie movies where there's there's right. often one guy who's you're like, just don't obviously do that. Wrong. You're screaming at the yeah. screen. You're like, why are they doing this? Like mm-hmm. in the in the Texas Chainsaw, when the cops going down into the basement, you're like, the first thing he sees, or no, it was even before that. It was when the second guy gets killed, the guy that's like a chef. He oh, wanders yeah. into the basement. First thing he sees at the bottom of the steps is a big pool of blood in a house that he's never been in yeah. before. Don't and he walk goes towards further. that. Yeah. It's like, you you can make that character do that, but give me a convincing reason why he's yeah. doing that. Yeah. I don't know what that reason would be, but that's what creative writing is for. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, you know what the best movie is for um, convincing motivations for characters doing reckless and foolhardy things? The Descent. The Descent. Yes, that was, the you descent. Didn't give me time es- to guess. I would have got yeah, it. Yeah, the descent established. Um, it's not a remake, but okay. no, it's nothing to do with this discussion. But um, the descent um, established a kind of psychological profile of these women, uh, who would later make some this is really a very feminine show. Or oh, it's yeah, it's uh, fabulous. They later make some really what would ordinarily be considered really stupid decisions. In words, were stupid decisions, but they weren't. Stupid in that horror movie way. You kind of stuck with them. Okay, that's enough about the scent. I didn't mean to get off topic, but um, but that's good. I need to revisit uh, the remake of Night of the it Living really, Dead. A lot of because you, you you love go, it. I haven't seen it. For if you years, go through I reviews, really remember it. which is why I kind of steered clear from it for a while. A lot of, a lot of it was that it just wasn't available. That was one that wasn't on DVD for whatever reason for a long time. And just recently, in the last maybe year, it became available. But even then, I didn't kind of like pursue it actively just because if you read the reviews for it they're not very good at all they Mm -hmm. talk about the same things that i talk about like i'm not introducing like a new concept or anything but i was just like really i thought it was a great pulpy they turned it they turned like a standard a simple horror movie into like a pulp type of i don't know a kill bill meets pulp fiction i mean it's not that good but yeah, I gotta watch that. You, you've, you've sort of discovered it recently. I saw it years ago. I remember it as good, but I barely remember it. So I gotta revisit it based on your recommendation. And there's another thing with it that I like is um, with um, these really simple stories where you don't really have a lot you can do in like one location because obviously people know uh, Night of the Living Dead. They're a group of kind of strangers essentially or tra- get trapped yeah. in a house yeah. in the middle of nowhere and there's zombies closing in on them. And do they run, or do they yeah. just batten down, the, you know, and circle the wagons, whatever kind of analogy you would use, and just lock themselves down away for help. Um, but I always point to, like, the economy of stories, where if one thing happens, and this is, like, the very per- uh, perfect example of it, um, where if one thing happens in one part of the room, it's a very literal translation of it. If one thing happens in one floor of the room, it fi- it can affect what's happening on the next floor, and then that in turn hap- affects what's going on in the basement. 
And there actually are characters who, like, hang out in the basement, essentially, because they want to be on lockdown. There are people in the middle who are kind of trying to decide whether they should, like, bolt out the door. Um, but they're kind of, like, halfway. They don't know if they should go down or if they should go up. And there are people on the uh, top floor with guns just, like, fighting, kind of, they're at their the end of their ropes. Um, and there are scenes where something will happen. I, can't, I don't know if I can even point to a specific example, but a lot of stuff like that did happen where something will happen upstairs, someone falls on the ground, um, it makes something else happen in the scene hmm. of the people below it. I don't know if I'm even explaining that well. But, like, someone will fall on the ground, the person in the basement, like, looks at the ceiling, like, what, what was that? And then they start to panic because of something they heard that was, like, misinterpreted. Like, I don't know. It's a real interesting way of storytelling that I like and I don't know a lot of films do that but that one in particular it stands out I think so so I kind of feel like I'm building it up into more than it is but I just really enjoyed watching it cool yeah so the remake of Night of the Living Dead definitely one of your favorite uh, yeah I think it was like 1990 or 91 or something like that are there any that you think are particularly bad other than Texas Chainsaw 3D that one definitely goes to the top of the list pretty bad um, I'm trying to think. The only other one that like instantly leaped to mind is maybe even because you mentioned it is Prom Night. Yeah, but it's weird because the original one of that is not that good of a movie. Right. Either. So and they I, didn't even have a good idea right, to go off of. They right. didn't. They didn't tarnish a, a franchise or anything. They just took a stupid idea and, and made a stupid movie out of it. Yeah, I mean we've gotten to the point where they're not just remaking the classics; they're just remaking anything at this point. Um. But even like I said, it's like it was hard for me to even come up with bad examples. Just well, yeah, so for, I, I so actually, forgettable. yeah, I, I guarantee was, there's ones out there. I actually was the same way. I was saying, I was like, okay, let me think of what the best and worst remakes are, and I'm like, man, I can think of a lot I really like, but I actually haven't seen that many that I don't like, you know. Um, but I think that might have more to do with the fact that we're somewhat selective in the movies that we end up seeing. We probably just been you able more to, so than me though. Yeah, but. we've been able to avoid a lot of the bad ones. Um, one that I didn't like was, and it wasn't like a complete disaster. Um, I agree that Texas Chainsaw 3D is probably one of the worst I've seen, um, even though it's not really a technical remake. Um, but one of one of the ones I didn't like was the recent uh, remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes, that was um yeah that would be on. And that's one I had high hopes for because the original Nightmare on Elm Street, great movie of course, um, but it's one I thought that you know if they can really capture the basic story of this movie and the basic idea and the basic tone, it's it's one that would really benefit from modern special effects, which I don't usually feel. Usually I feel like the practical effects from like the seventies and eighties are just fine. Ironically, for me. that's what ruined it. Well, I, th- I think it had some other problems, too. I mean, I don't remember it that well. Um, Jackie Earl Haley, um, personally, I think Robert England could have done it again, and I would have been yeah, thrilled. There's no reason to have um, Maybe a new slightly tweaked makeup job, but throw him in there. I mean, he is Freddy. Um, but I like Jackie Earl Haley, um, so I was open to him in the role. It could have been anybody. In that movie, it could have. He, his performance just kind of felt flat. It was a very dark uh, Freddy. And, um, I mean, it sounds weird to say, but they made the fact that Freddy Krueger was actually, like, molesting these kids much more explicit in this movie. And for me, that didn't work. It kind of Because it takes him out of being an urban myth, and it turns it into, it, like, a CSI it, it a, story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's, there's a kind of admittedly dark, admittedly twisted fairy tale quality to the original Nightmare on Elm Street. It's a just a brilliant fucking story that Wes Craven came up with for the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Used that word. <laughs> it's a great it's just a great origin story for Freddy Krueger. Um yeah. er, perfect. he's a bastard son of a thousand maniacs. Yep, it sounds like a true That's urban from that it movie. sounds like a true urban legend. Um and yeah, I felt like literalizing, you know, the the you know, sexual abuse aspects yeah, of that character um, took away from that and also was a bit inappropriate for a Freddy Krueger movie. A I fun mean, horror movie. Exactly, it's which not, is ultimately what they should be. So I, I was disappointed that they didn't do a better job with The Nightmare on Elm Street because and that's also, a series that I would have loved to also see. Also, it came out right after they did the remake of Friday the 13th, right? Friday the 13th It was around the same time. I think that maybe one came a out year first. later. So yeah. then I was thinking like, 
the Friday the Thirteenth remake is not great, but it's I it think got it's, the job done. I think it's better than a I lot, was I was satisfied with reviews. it. Yeah. Um, so then Friday or Nightmare on Elm Street came out a little bit after that, and you're thinking like it kind of had a little bit of a yeah. sense in it, but yeah, just it sunk the ship again. Yeah, it just didn't. It wasn't really that good. Um, some that I do like a lot. I really like uh, Let Me In, which yep. is the remake of the. I think it's a Swedish film, Let the Right One In, and I, which is also great. Uh, yeah. And this is a case of... Re- That's one where I've only seen the original. I've never seen the remake. Oh, you should see the remake. Uh, it's a Hammer film. Yes, it's one of the new, I, new that, efforts from the revitalized Hammer. That I know. Um, and uh, I like to bring this one up because this is a case... Wasn't of, it also Drew Goddard who did that? Oh, I'm not sure. I, I, think, I think he directed it. No, I don't think he directed wrote it? it. No, he might have written it, but I don't think he directed it. Okay. Um, There's some director who I like who did it. Okay. That's all I'll say. Um, but, <laughs> I got uh, minimum amount of research. Minimum, we cannot emphasize the minimum research we do for this show enough. All right, go on. But um, this is a case of a remake that was done not because the movie was old or had kind of lapsed out of the public's attention, but because it was a foreign it's film to expand the that they thought you know, making an American version would expand the audience. Um, so, uh, I let the right one is a great film, a great vampire movie, kind of an anti Twilight in a lot of ways. And uh, let me in though is also a great film, and yeah, I like I, to I remember really like I like to mention let me in as as a good film because a lot of my friends um, dismiss it and the film snobs. Well, they like to point out that the original was better and it didn't need to be remade. And I feel right. like what they're really saying is, I am a person who watches subtitled foreign films. You know? And it's like, well, can you really explain... Which is better than the people that don't watch a movie True, just because the subtitle, but, but it's still bad. But they, they, they created a very worthy version of the story with Let Me In. And honestly, I think it's slightly better. I think the American. I said it. I said it. I'll say it again if I have to. They did a slightly better version of the story in the American remake. Yeah, I got um, it. And I think the people who, no one's ever been able to explain to me why that isn't the case. They always just say like, "Well, I like the Swedish original and all this stuff." But yeah. um, let me in is one of my favorite remakes. Um, the Ring is another example. That's one that everybody points to. The Ring. Yeah. Yeah, that's another example of a good remake. That I can't even discuss these because I've seen The Ring, which I like, but I've never seen the original. Well, I've so. seen Ringu, and again, The Ring is better. I love a lot of uh, foreign, like the Ring foreign lot. movies, um, but they did a great job with The Ring. Um, uh, probably one of the first really good uh, remakes, horror remakes, was Dawn of the Dead. Yep, that's um, another one that I thought of. Which they did a really nice job with that. Um, I think everyone, The Ring 2 is terrible, by the way. Ring 2 is terrible. Hollow, Rob's on Halloween, Halloween 2, 2 was terrible. So usually they can only get one in. But uh, there it's are... It's just like the monkeys at a typewriter rule. You know, like they're <laughs> they're going to get something right yes, by, but, just by sheer volume of people doing it. But So there are a few... Another one I them. thought of was um, that I know you didn't like quite as much. Because I remember I recommended because I really liked it. And you were... A little underwhelmed, probably, was The Crazies. I was slightly underwhelmed with The Crazies, but it's it's a good film. I think that is a good a movie where the story is already set up by the original. Um, so it, it doesn't really do any new creative things with the story, but there's so many little moments in that movie um, that you could point out that I could... The car wash? There are scenes like that... Um, where they're trapped in like a car wash. There's really simple ideas that I could make like a trailer out of it. Like yeah. I, I could sell you on this movie based on these little moments. And sell they, they kind of did. They kind of did in the trailers too because they show a lot of that stuff. There's a scene. Uh, he's in the morgue. He discovers that one, like one of the bodies isn't dead, and he's fighting the guy. Um, the guy's got a bone saw, and he's, it's like chasing him around the oh, room. Oh yeah. It's like it's on the floor and it goes up crazy and it's like chasing him. It's like it has nothing to do with the zombie, but it's an interesting yeah. idea. There's another scene where he's in like the attic of it looked like the house from Night of the Living Dead almost, um, and which is also he's soon fighting, to be remade. He's fighting off. He's they're doing a Mexican standoff like a Tarantino movie or something, and he's trying to convince someone. I don't know if I'm remembering exactly right, but this is pretty much what happens is he's trying to convince someone to let his wife go because they're holding her hostage and they're shooting at each other 
And the whole time he's doing this, he's trapped on the floor because he's got a knife through his hand mm-hmm. that's holding him to the floor. Yeah. And he has to, like, slowly through that scene, he's, like, pulling it off. He's, like, sliding the knife up his arm. And that's, like, going on throughout the whole scene. And it's just, like, a real undercurrent of yeah. something really... You know, I, th- I think... Really uh, going on. You're right. There's Cra- a lot of little moments. Crazy is a like good movie. That. It was very, very well-reviewed, so I think my expectations were, were a bit high, so maybe I didn't quite embrace it to the extent that you did, but it's definitely a good film. And I feel like a common thread in the, um, the remakes and the movies that you respond positively to, and I like, too, is that it's not so much about, like big ideas or interesting twists like making Leatherface the hero as it is about just crafting really great scenes. You know, you can have a simple premise, but come up with some really inventive scenes, some really great sequences. That's true of a lot of movies, but I also think that it's because you kind of know you're in good hands. Mm -hmm. Um, You can tell, I don't know a lot about um, the director of, uh, what was it? Of the craziest, I was just talking about. I can't believe I just forgot it. But mm-hmm. I don't know the director of that, and, um, but I can guarantee that he likes horror movies. Yeah, it it just comes through, which is why I wanted to see Rob Zombie's movies because he knows almost everything about and horror I feel movies, like and that the dir- comes through the yeah. product. And I and feel like the director of Chainsaw Chainsaw likes money. I feel like he's he uh, he's like a, a lot of money, like a huckster, like going from town to town. <laughs> And he might love horror. Suit. Hey, he, he might, might love him, but he, he doesn't get him, it. He might love him, but he doesn't have the skill to pull it off. Or at least he didn't in this movie. So, and the, even the director—I don't even know who the director of this movie was. Like I said, I kind of—he had done a previous movie that I hadn't heard of that I don't think was a horror movie, and he had written an early like Jason movie. Like even given that whole pedigree that he's got, it just—it didn't add up to much. Like you can exist in the business making horror movies and not know a damn thing about. Clearly, so and yeah, it's, it's a lot of it is the passion behind it too that you yeah. that just becomes apparent on the screen. I think. Yep. So, so skip um, Texas Chainsaw 3D, but there's a lot of good remakes out there. So we're not anti remake. Uh, we're nope. just anti Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. Just watch the original again. It's a great film. So good I, stuff. All right, cool. Well, we better wrap up this episode because this was quite an epic discussion of. Uh, Remakes and yeah, I feel bit. feel a little better. I'll be okay. I will survive my viewing of Texas Chainsaw 3D, and uh, I'll take solace in knowing that I may have spared some of you a trip to the theater and eight bucks to to sit through this. It was a good burger, Travis. That was a, it. Was a really good burger. So on that note, uh, we'll wrap up another episode of Brain Says Strange Things. Thanks as always for watching. We'll be back real soon to talk about more horror movies. Bye now.